Hey guys, so today's video is gonna be a favorites video. Haven't done one in a while. Haven't done one in this setup in a while. Um, haven't worn a blazer on camera in many months. I uh, just did a get ready with me video, chit chat get ready with me video. And if you guys want like an update on kind of what's going on with me, mental health wise and personally, cause I do talk about that a lot on my channel, then I would check that video out. I'm not sure if it's going up before or after, but if it is up, I will link it below. Otherwise keep an eye out for it. But long story short, I'm feeling pretty good. So I thought I would kind of get back to business as usual. And anytime I come back to work, I'm always like, what do I come back with? I don't know what to say. And I figured favorites video might be good because that would give you a pretty good indication of where I am, what I'm interested in, what I'm focusing on, and just kind of, you know, allow me to reintroduce myself. We have a lot of stuff in this video, so I'm not gonna ramble for very long. There's a little bit of everything. We got makeup, skincare, home stuff, cooking stuff, um, books, a little bit of everything. In fact, let's start off with books because I've literally probably only read two really good books this year, and I've been reading a lot. You guys don't know this about me, I'm a big, big old bookworm and I've been trying to step out of my comfort zone, which is typically thrillers, horror, just anything kind of messed up is what I like to read. And I've read the same book literally 700 times this year with the exception of maybe four, but I will tell you about the two that I've read most recently that I really liked. First one is Girl A by Abigail Dean. <sighs> this book got me out of a little bit of a reading slump that I was going through this summer and I've actually owned this book for a while. I have tons of books I have not read, you guys. I can't be the only one who does this. I go through phases where I just add to cart, add to cart, add to cart, or like suddenly my iPad will be just filled with samples of books I wanna read. And I had this one for maybe a year before I finally picked it up. And this book has, let me give you all the trigger warnings. This is not a book you wanna read if you are sensitive to themes of abuse or any of that particularly pertaining to children. This is the story of Lex. She goes by Girl A a few times in this book because you're kind of reading this book bouncing back and forth between the past and the present. And all you know is that Lex and her family are kind of infamous and all the children were assigned names like Girl A, Boy A, Girl B, Boy B to protect their anonymity as they were young children when the tragedy that takes place in this book, Bic, when the tragedy that takes place in this book occurred. This book is devastating in some places, like the things that you hear these children were subjected to by their parents. There were several times where I kind of gagged. There were times when like I had to reread the same passage about three times to fully wrap my brain around what just happened. And there's a little bit of a surprise ending that I didn't super see coming until probably maybe about five pages before it happened. It's a hopeful tale. It's it's dark, okay? It's, it's intense. But if you like this type of subject matter, if you're a true crime person, this is not based on any real story that I'm aware of, you probably would like this. But again, all the trigger warnings, I would give this four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. There are four books I read this year that I consider good and two out of the four are five stars. This is one of them. This book is called Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. I had never heard of this book before. I was watching somebody on booktube. I can't remember who it was. It was a guy. Um, if I can find his channel, I'll link him down below. I bought several books on his recommendation and this was one of them. I am obsessed with this book. I'm definitely gonna read it a few times. This book is like American Psycho meets like Miranda Priestly if she was an angsty, horrible, uh, 20 something female. <laughs> like something in that uh, vicinity. It's about a girl named Irina. This takes place just from her perspective. Um, and she has a weird obsession with photographing men. And I don't want to tell you too much, but she's a horrible person. <laughs> There's a few parts in this book where I just loathed her so much and yet was completely fascinated by her. If you've read American Psycho or if you like American Psycho, Psycho you will get about 50 pages into this book and start to see what I mean by that. It's a really great character study, which is one of my favorite types of books to read. I love to understand the motivations and the history and just kind of the inner workings of wretched people. I don't know, they're well more well-written than heroes. They just are, nine times out of 10. 
But yeah, uh, if you want a book that's going to keep you up at night, gross you out, fascinate you, you're going to be telling everyone about it, it's this one. It's well written. It's a page turner. It's it's really good, you guys. This needs to be a movie. <laughs> I think that like Ryan Murphy or someone like that would do a really great movie or miniseries with this book. So definitely check it out. Next, let's do some home care. Um, these are essential oils or essential perfume blends. I don't really know what you would call these. These are diffuser oils, I think is the correct term. These are the smaller sizes of these because I bought them nose blind and wanted to test them before I committed to the larger bottles. I heard about these on a channel. I think the girl who runs it, her name is Hannah Naylor. I'll leave her down below, but she has, I love her channel. There's also a girl named Brandy Jackson on YouTube whose home channel I love. In fact, there's a Brandy Jackson inspired purchase here. I'll tell you about in a minute. But anyway, Hannah talked about these oil fragrances in a recent video and I love home fragrance. Like I literally have a candle burning right now. Uh, but I tend to buy, I'm kind of, I'm kind of bored with it. And so far as I buy the same things over and over again, like every fall, I'm going to buy white pumpkin, marshmallow fireside and pumpkin pecan waffles. And every spring I love, um, there's one from Bath and Body Works every spring that I buy and it smells like laundry and I love it. And I can't remember the name of it. And then Christmas time, I buy fresh balsam. Like I always have the same fragrances going. So I'm looking for new things, um, but I'm not educated enough on other candle brands to know if it's worth the money, but I was willing to take the plunge here. Anyway, these are two essential oil blends from this company called Aroma. Is that just all it's called? Aroma Tech. You can get this on Amazon, I'll link it down below. One is called Love Affair and one is called Santal. Apparently Santal is like the, big seller, one that everyone loves. And I do like this one. It smells kind of masculine. These fragrances are complex. They're not, you know, they don't smell like, for example, like I said, laundry or like a pumpkin or a cupcake. They smell almost like a personal fragrance, like a cologne or a perfume. They smell so expensive. Like your house will kind of smell like a luxury hotel or something like that, which I think is kind of the idea behind this whole line. I'm plowing through these and I definitely need to buy the bigger bottles soon. I do like Santal, it is more masculine, but the one I really like is Love Affair. This one smells like, like it still has that slightly masculine, musky, but also floral and a hint of sweet. Like I almost don't mind, diffusing this in lieu of a lot of my normal kind of like bakery scented fall fragrances because it has that sweet element in it that just, I don't know, it's like really doing it for me. If you guys have never smelled these or ever tried them, I highly recommend you do. I just diffuse them in a regular um, essential oil diffuser. These are also pet safe, which is a big reason I don't typically diffuse essential oils because not all of them are, but these are. And I just put it in my essential oil diffuser with some water and it fills up the whole room pretty well. If you have a larger space, you might want to have two essential oil diffusers, but I also know that this company makes like hotel themed oils as well as a very particular type of diffuser that's like $300 it's going on my Christmas list but yeah really love this stuff just wanted to share with you in case you haven't heard of it um anything I buy on Amazon will be on my Amazon storefront um yeah I'll set all that up and you guys can find it down there if you're interested so next speaking of fragrance let's talk about this this is Gucci Flora I picked this up Right when my daughter was going back to school, we were doing back to school shopping and I always buy her a bottle of perfume for back to school and for Christmas. And she was trying to figure out what she wanted and I was like, if it were me, I'd get Gucci Flora, the Gardenia one, cause I've been obsessed with it since it came out. I just haven't bought perfume this year. The only time I bought perfume this year. No, I haven't bought perfume at all this year. This is my first bottle. And that's because it is so special to me. I haven't gone to like Nordstrom or Sephora, like a big Sephora and sniffed around in such a long time. So I probably just haven't really smelled a whole lot of new things. And that could be why I haven't bought anything new, but I have wanted this since it came out. I just never picked it up. So me and her both got a bottle of this and it's so interesting to me that it's because it's weird, right? Like this is how I know I'm not super experienced with fragrance. 
It says flora, it says gardenia. I don't smell gardenia anywhere in here, to be honest. I love gardenia scented things and I don't get that. I get floral, but I also get something kind of sweet. Like, will you guys tell me what I'm smelling? It says that it's white gardenia, jasmine, and pear blossom, but there's something so much more complex to this than that, in my opinion. They actually do have another one that's jasmine. It's in a green bottle. I'm gonna get that in spring because I don't feel like it's gonna really be great for fall and winter. But this one, even though it's floral, like I said, there's almost something sweet about it that makes me feel like it works, you know, all year round. But anyway, if you guys haven't smelled this or if you've been on the fence about buying it, you wanna buy something nose blind, it might be this. This is one of the best selling fragrances I've had in my collection in such a long time. So you guys may have noticed I'm super pale. <laughs> um, that's because I am working really hard on my neck and my chest skin. And when you're trying to do an anti-aging routine on any part of your body, which in particular for me right now is my neck and my chest, um, you have to kind of exfoliate pretty consistently. And even though I've been super consistent and dedicated to Retin-A, Retin-All, uh, AHAs, BHAs on my face for years, because I've usually got a spray tan on, like my neck and my chest have been neglected. So all that being said, I've been working, I've been working really hard on my skin. That sounds so silly, but it's true. I have been upping my device game so much and not just in terms of how many devices are in my routine, but my consistency with them. I'm trying to do like a month long device challenge. I can film that for you guys, but I'm a good week into it already, week and a half into it already. So there will be a little time taken off, but I'd be happy to film it. I can tell a huge difference in my face just in a week and a half of being consistent with my devices. I know a lot of people think that you can only get noticeable differences done in office and there are in office treatments I am considering getting done, but the list of in office treatments has gone down a little bit <laughs> since I started being more consistent with my devices and I've added new ones in. I found new ways to use ones that I already have. Uh, one of the new ones I've added is a microneedling pen. This is something that like, had you told me even a year ago that I would be using, I probably wouldn't have believed you. It, it just seemed too intimidating. It seemed almost like one of those things, you know how you'd be like on YouTube and there'll be some video that it'll be like, skin care things that you don't need or skin care trends that are useless or whatever. Even though I really hadn't heard anything to support that, I just kind of assumed microneedling was one of those things. Even though I've had a PRP done, which is a microneedling facial where they inject your plasma into your face and my skin was tight as a drum. It was so beautiful. So I know that worked and I know I loved the results of that, but doing it at home, I was afraid to do. It just did not seem like a good idea. But um, I love Penn Smith Skincare. I'll leave her down below. I've talked about her before. She's talked about microneedling on her channel forever. She is a licensed esthetician. So she does uh, medical microneedling. I'm not prepared for that. I think that's something I would go in office for, but she does talk about cosmetic needling and nano needling in particular. And I did a nano needling session on myself last week, which is basically just, I don't have the head. I don't want to take one out and uh, contaminate it, but you put the head in here and it doesn't have like long, thin, sticky out needles. It almost doesn't even look like needles at all. It's completely flat. They're in there, but you can't see them. And I just did a microneedling treatment on my skin and on my neck and on my chest. And immediately I noticed that my skin looked tighter. And even with the acne hyperpigmentation I've been dealing with, I noticed a lot of that is starting to get better as well. So. This is something I've been adding into my rotation weekly. I can do a video with this if you guys want. I'm not the expert. I would check out Penn Smith through that, but I am kind of a believer in this now and I will definitely share with you guys new things I learned along the way. And I plan on getting um, a couple or a few more PRP facials as winter and fall start coming around. And I would love to share that with you as well because I have had great results with that. But yeah, in terms of devices, this is my newest one and I love it. Remember when I told you there was a Brandy Jackson inspired purchase on here? This is it. This is the most beautiful, fancy, unnecessarily expensive recipe box you're probably ever gonna find. As extra and bougie as this thing is, right? I have very big plans for it. I like to cook, you guys. I've told you for a while 
This is something that I love to do. It's a big love language for me. I've been really getting into my home more. I love decorating and cooking and event planning and hosting. So I'm just on the hunt for stuff like this. And I've been wanting to collect my recipes into one place. They're not my recipes, but they're my favorite recipes into one place because I have them everywhere. I have like a thousand cookbooks. I have tons on Pinterest. Um, there's YouTube videos that have recipes that I like and I just wanted one place to put them and I didn't really want to do like a cookbook because all the ones that I found that were kind of like customizable just weren't my aesthetic. But this is gold. It's like my favorite thing in the world. So I'm obsessed with this. Bernie Jackson did a video where she featured this product the first time I saw it and she said something that I think is so true that this is something you could pass down to your kids. Like for my daughter, I could fill this up with recipes, things that she loves to eat. And when the time comes to pass them down, she will have them in this beautiful, really well-made, <laughs> solid, like this thing could be a weapon, you know what I mean? Um, sturdy, just precious, precious recipe box. I actually bought two more recipe boxes before I picked this one up because I was like, oh, I want a recipe box. That's such a good idea, but I don't want to spend $120 on a recipe box. I bought two other ones I didn't like very much. Waste of money. I could have just gone straight to this one. I'm obsessed with it and I can't wait to fill it up. Oh, also would make a great gift. If you got a cook in your life, they would love this, I promise. Okay, so speaking of recipes, I thought I would share this with you guys really quick. Um, I have a lot of recipes on Pinterest. They're not mine, but I've pinned a lot of recipes on Pinterest. And I started noticing that tons of them were from this woman named, what is her name? Tegan Gerard, Jared, Jared, Tegan Jared. Um, she runs the blog Half Bake Harvest. Uh, so I finally broke down and bought, I don't know, maybe like all of her cookbooks. There's three that I can find. These cookbooks, these recipes, you guys, if you are looking for recipes that are a mix between like comfort food, but something a little bit ele elevated, but not too intimidating, uh, that everyone will love, you will love these cookbooks. In fact, a lot of her recipes just scream fall, so now is a particularly good time to pick these up. Everything I have ever made from this woman and her recipes have been incredible. There's one recipe, I think it's in this book, but it was this chicken dish with like um, potatoes and this cream sauce. You didn't have to chop a single thing. You literally don't chop anything in this recipe. And it was so easy, so delicious. It had like this cheesy white wine, like uh, four cups of Sauvignon Blanc kind of white wine sauce. It was so good. And my daughter liked it. And I've just, I've just made so many things from this uh, woman that I think are incredible. If you've never heard of her, never tried her recipes and you like to cook, particularly like I'm saying, during the fall, if you're looking for those soups, those stews, those hearty, comforting meals. This is this is where you go. I'm just saying. A little bit of makeup and then we'll do skin and then I'm done. I know this video is long, but I haven't done a favorites in forever. So first things first are these blushes from Rare Beauty. I have done at least two, well, at least one video you guys have seen using these, but I filmed a video today using them as well. They're in the color, oh, the eyes are going believe and grace grace is like a cool true pink it's not like that baby pink that dior blush that everyone was going crazy over in spring or summer but it's very very pink and um believe is more of like a warm mauve pink if you will i love both of these i wear them pretty much all the time now they're the only blushes that i gravitate towards i feel like these would look good on pretty much anyone um if you do not like a pink blush though don't don't mess with this one because there's no, it's not pinkish neutral or pinkish plum. It is straight up pink. Um, it is very beautiful, but these blushes in general are starting to become the only kind of blushes I want to use. They're so pigmented. I feel like this bottle will go rancid well before I can finish it. I wish this product existed when I was doing freelance makeup work because this is all I would have kept as far as blushes are concerned. They blend out like a dream. I see people doing all different kinds of things with them, like mixing them with concealers or using them as lip colors. Just, I think in terms of rare beauty, if the rest of the line is even remotely this good, I'm super interested in trying them. So if you guys have other favorites from the line, definitely let me know. And just for um, frame of reference, I am wearing Believe as my blush today. It's on my cheeks, it's on my nose, on my forehead, it's everywhere. 
Next are concealers. You guys, I have been using NARS Radiant Creamy for three years and I don't know why anymore because compared to these, I just kind of feel like they're hot garbage. I mean, they're nice for what they are. I think NARS Radiant Creamy concealer is more of a highlighting product. Like, I don't think it's as good of a concealer because they are so creamy. They almost can get cakey really quick and the coverage doesn't really justify that texture and or my preferences are just just changing because at one point I swore by NARS Radiant Cre Creamy and now I'm obsessed with Makeup Forever HD. These are the Ultra HD concealers. I have like four, four or five of these that I mix and match depending on like what skin tone I am, if I'm tan or not. Right now, obviously I'm not tan at all and this color 10 is a really good highlighting concealer. Look how pale this is. It's like basically white. These are the kind of pigmented that's not hanging out in 2016 kind of pigmented, you know, when everybody was obsessed with the word pigment, but they have such good coverage and such a thin consistency, which for me is always what I love in a, in a makeup product, particularly with complexion, because I just want sheer pigment with very little emollients to it. And these are just thin enough to blend easily, spread well, not settle into fine lines and wrinkles, but pigmented enough that you don't need a lot of it at all. This is my new favorite concealer. I, I know everyone and their mother has probably already talked about these before, but I haven't done a lot of makeup, makeup, <laughs> my accent comes out so weird. Um, I haven't done a lot of makeup content in a while. So these are just kind of some updates on staples like blushes and concealers. And this is where I'm hanging out. And I don't think I'm leaving anytime soon. Lastly, I mentioned this in my most recent video, my get ready with me. I was wearing a green robe in it. Anyway, this is the Charlotte Tilbury Bigger Brighter Eyes Palette. I'm not wearing this today, but I usually, I wear this every day. Like on a daily basis, running errands, hanging around the house, just gotta put something on my eyes. It is this. I love Charlotte Tilbury's pal um, palettes in general. I feel like they are small for how much they cost, obviously, but sometimes I feel like when you're in a hurry and you just need to get ready, the more options you have, the more time it's gonna take. So I just like something that's just no fuss, no muss. I can just throw it on. But on top of that, these are so beautifully formulated. They essentially blend themselves. Like if you cannot get eyeshadow to work for you, you feel like you can't blend it out. It always looks choppy. You cannot have a choppy, uh, messed up eyeshadow look with these shadows. They're so smooth and just, they literally blend themselves. These, her shimmers, like her glitters or whatever she puts in hers are so well done because they give you that glamour and that glitz without looking cheap or childish. I'm just gonna call it like it is. Um, like they look expensive. They just make your eyelids look like they, they cost a lot of money. I don't know how else to explain it. They're so reflective and the, and the shimmers are so tiny, but so sparkly. Like it's, it's just, ugh, I love this palette. Um, this color too right here, this kind of defining crease color, is like the perfect rosy mid-tone brown nude. And I love um, eyeshadows and bronzers. I have a little bit of pink in them because I'm kind of pink toned and it just looks more natural on me. I just think this would look good on pretty much everyone. So if you've been on the fence about this, if you've never heard of it, if you're interested in trying Charlotte Tilbury shadows, this is the palette I would absolutely start with. This is not a new favorite by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but this is a new way I'm using this product and it's changed my life. This is my Myolift Mini from 70 Wellness. Um, and this is the glove attachment that comes with it. If you guys have been watching my channel for any length of time, you know what this is, you know how much I love it. And I'm not gonna lie, I fell off of using all of my devices as, consistent, as consistently as I should. Um, maybe sometime in late spring, early summer. In a perfect world, I would like to use a device every day, even if it's just for like five or 10 minutes, but I really fell off and was kind of only using it like once a week. And that was showing on my face. Like the last video that I filmed um, with the green robe, I took some selfies and I was like, what? I just feel like I look so flat and like my face looks so droopy and just, it wasn't the vibe. No offense to anyone who doesn't mind that kind of stuff, but I'm not into it. I just did not feel like I looked like myself. So I started getting really diligent about my facial devices again and huge difference. It's crazy how much of a difference, particularly microcurrent. Um, I think just 
can almost change your face uh, and really give you back years, especially because um, it, in this instance in particular where I'm kind of using it with some gua sha tools, another Pinsmith uh, recommendation, I'll leave this video down below. When using microcurrent with gua sha, you are just draining so much fluid out of your face and I am a puffy person. Like I can look like I've gained or lost five to 10 pounds based on the last time I did gua sha or did some lymphatic drainage. Like it just builds up in my face. And Penn Smith did a video where she put her elect, uh, microcurrent gloves on and used some stainless steel gua sha to do a gua sha treatment and I tried it. I've done it like three times and every time I do it, I cannot believe how much of a difference it makes in how much more tight my skin looks and my face appears. I got a few devices going right now. Like I told you, I'm loving the results. I kind of feel like when I look in the mirror, I feel like I look like myself again and I just wasn't feeling that way for a while. But if you guys have bought this on my recommendation, I highly recommend you pick these things up. I will leave them down below. I got these on Amazon. And try using your gloves with some gua sha tools on your microcurrent device. I'm telling you, you'll be blown away. Um, and if you've never heard of this device, because this is for some reason the first video you've ever watched of mine, I will link this down below. It's the Myolif Mini. It's microcurrent. It's the best microcurrent device out there. It has a million different attachments to it. It will change your face. It erases wrinkles. I've been using it on my neck lately, trying to, like I told you, get my neck under control. I've noticed a little bit of change in there, even though it is new to my neck routine. I don't know. I freaking love it. So... Again, if you bought this on my recommendation, pick these up. I will link them down below. I think they were like 10 bucks or something. I have been using these and I've probably talked about them before, but I have certain serums that I repurchase over and over and over and over again, like Osmosis Stim Factor, Osmosis Rescue. I've always got that. Um, this is turning into the next version of that for me. This is the Naturium Niacinamide and the Naturium Hyaluronic Acid Serum. Apparently, according to Amazon, they also have a transemic acid with kojic acid in it um, as well. So I definitely want to pick that up. But these I have repurchased so many times. I got my daughter on these as well. I don't really have a ton of drugstore skincare that I love. You know, I like La Roche-Posay a lot. Um, I like a Ven. I don't know if that's really considered drugstore. There are some Versed products I'm testing out that I really enjoy. And now I think I'm a full blown fan of Naturium. Like I would probably try anything from them because they're so reasonably priced and they work so well. Like as far as the niacinamide in particular, niacinamide can be one of those ingredients that if you don't get the right formulation and the right amount of niacinamide, it can irritate your skin. And I'm very sensitive, everything breaks me out and I've had no issues with this. And I do notice my skin brightening and getting better and better every time I use these. Um, I also appreciate how well made the packaging is. Like a lot of drugstore skincare or drugstore beauty in general, like where they're able to get their price point the way that it is, is because they sacrifice a lot on packaging. Like you can't just have it all, right? And not that the packaging of any product is the end all be all for me. I really want it to work. But I do appreciate that this is kind of a nice, like, I don't know, this is not glass, but like a ceramic or what is this? It's not plastic, whatever it is. It's a nice, sturdy product. This has got to be my third bottle of each of these. And like I said, I want to try the transanemic, transanemic, I can't say it. The one I mentioned at the top of the video or the top of the segment, I want to try that one as well. So I think I love Naturium. If you guys have any particular products from that brand that you think I should check out, definitely let me know because I like them a lot. Lastly, but certainly not le leastly, I don't think I have mentioned this in any video at any point, and I've had this for a minute. I don't even remember when I got it, but it's been several months. This is the Use of the People Super Berry Hydrate and Glow Dream Mask with Maki, Vitamin C, Squalene, and Hyaluronic Acid. First of all, I do wanna say when I got this, I was surprised how little it is. Like, it just seems kinda little. This is a sleeping mask. It's typically not a product a type of product I'm drawn to, a sleeping mask. I think that so many things in skincare, um, I don't know, they're nice to have, they're nice to do, they feel good to put on in the moment and there's something so self-care about it, but they're not always moving the needle as far as your skin is concerned. They're just nice to have. 
And sleeping masks for me were one of those things because I don't know, just kind of felt like an overblown moisturizer in a lot of ways. And the ones I had tried, I just didn't feel blown away by. But this one, I'm not gonna lie, every time I use it, and I'm assuming it's because of the vitamin C that's in here, I notice a difference in how bright my skin is the next day. Like I mentioned, I'm working on hyperpigmentation from a ton of breakouts I had this year, you guys. I did not have a clear face. I still don't, like I have one, one right here but my skin has not been as clear as it is right now for literally a year. It's been nonstop breakouts. They were really, really stressing me out. But what comes with that for me is not just the breakouts cause like those are bad enough, but I get scars. Like I will be covered in red scars because of breakouts and it's hard to get them to go away. And it's hard to get them to go away quickly. But every time I use this, the next morning I wake up, I don't use this maybe more than twice a week or so, because I got a lot of other stuff going on with my skin. But there is a noticeable difference every single time I use it. And my skin just, in general, feels really moisturized and hydrated. And I love this stuff. Like, again, it's not meant to be used every day. I think one of the cautions you have to take with overnight masks is that they are supposed to be chock full of a lot of active ingredients that you don't want to overdo on your skin. Uh, again, the ones I've tried in the past, except for this one, I didn't feel like really did anything to begin with. So again, I don't use this every day, but I almost wish they would come out with like some sort of daily moisturizer like this with a little bit of a lower amount of these, these actives, but formulated this well. It just, my skin feels so good after I use it and I'm not, usually a big fan of what I call Sephora skincare. It's for me, it's almost always medical grade, K-beauty. Clearly I'm getting into Naturium and La Roche-Posay a lot, but this, my friend, this is the real deal. And if there's any other products from this line that you guys have tried that works this well, please let me know. I might consider picking them up. I'm per super persnickety, like with skincare, so we'll see, but this, Oh, so good. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I have filmed two videos today. I'm just so impressed with me. Um, let me know what you guys wanna see in the coming weeks. I have some stuff I'm working on that I'm pretty excited to do. If the video that I filmed doing this makeup look and hanging out and talking to you guys is up, I will leave a link below. If not, keep an eye out for it so we can hang out and do some makeup together. I really am glad to be back here in this setup doing makeup and wearing a blazer. I feel like myself again, which is nice. And uh, I had a really good time filming today, which I haven't felt like that in such a long time. So I'm feeling, feeling pretty good. I hope you guys are doing really well, taking really good care of yourselves, looking forward to a really fun fall and happy holiday season. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.